Did anyone come here this evening hoping and praying for someone to rob you of the hope that you have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Did any of you come here this evening pleading, pleading that it will strip you of the motivation that you have, the motivation that we have in serving our God? Certainly not. None of you came here this evening for that purpose. You came here this evening to be encouraged, to be uplifted, to hear the word of God, and to know for certain again and again that God is with us, and that he promised never to leave us. This evening, the Apostle Paul shared with us a secret of not being discouraged. He shared with us a secret of not losing heart on this journey that we call life. He shared with us a secret of how to be encouraged, how to have joy and hope along the way. I pray that you would listen carefully today and I will share with you the secret that St. Paul shared with all of us on how to be encouraged in this cruel, evil world that we are living in. This is indeed a cruel world that we are living in. Sin on every side, reaching and grabbing for us, trying to discourage us. Sin on every side, trying to stop us from serving the Lord. Yet the Apostle Paul says and assure us that he has the secret, the secret of joy and hope while we travel. He tells us as we listen to the Apostle Paul, he gives us a list of things that happened to him. And we would say, how is this St. Paul that you could be encouraged in all the things that you have gone through? Oh, he tells us about being shipwrecked. He tells us about being in prison more than any of the other disciples. He tells us about being beaten 40 times, being in the water, being uh, talked about, being scandalized by his brothers and even by the Jews. And yet he comes with a word of encouragement to us along the journey. Oh, he talks about, and I know that there are times many of you all of us, no doubt, have been discouraged. There are times when we have felt like throwing in the towel and say, what's the use? There are times that we have felt like, perhaps like David, saying, oh, if I had the wings of a dove, I'll fly away and be at rest. Leave all of this trouble, all of this heartache, all of this disappointment behind. Yes, no doubt every one of us, and I'm sure can say like David, I would love some time to just give it up. There are times that you have been discouraged. And there's things that discourage us along the way. And as we listen at the text, the Apostle, the Apostle Paul say to us that that outward part is wearing away. The outward man is wearing away. He is talking about this old body of ours is wearing away. And every one of us know, you who have been here for a little while, you know that every day you wake up sometime with a different pain and a different ache, and you wonder where that one came from. And as we continue this journey, we will continue to have these aches and pains. Paul says this outward man is wearing away. Yes, we are wearing away day by day. Sin is tearing at us. And this is the reason because of sin, because of disobedient, because of sin in the world. Sin calls us to think and feel and feel bad. Sin calls us to do all of these wicked and evil things. And besides sin, then there's our fellow man, our fellow man who too are talking about us and stabbing us in the back. Yes, as we travel on this journey called life. Paul says, this is the reason we feel like giving up because this old sinful nature of ours is weighing down. We know that this old, this old body of ours one day will die. 
The Bible is saying there is an appointed time. Appointed time. There's some appointments that we may be able to get around, but this appointment we will not be able to get around. It is appointed time for man to die because this whole body is wearing away. And we don't know how we will leave here. We don't know when, how it will happen. Some, no doubt, may be in an accident. Some may die with a heart attack. Some may just uh, <coughs> die in their sleep. We don't know how we will leave here, but we are sure of this one thing, that we will leave here. So the Apostle Paul says, we are wearing away. We are wearing away day by day. And the sins of the world that reaches and grabs at us. But then he comes and he says, the secret is that in this we are renewed day by day. We are being renewed. Yet this old body of ours is decaying. This old body of ours are corrupting, but he says our spirit is being renewed day by day. What is he saying here? He is saying here, even though we are, this body is given up, our spirit is growing stronger in God day by day. That we are to renew the spirit day by day. We are to renew just as we eat day by day in order to be strengthened, then we need to be fed with the word of God and nurtured with that word of God. And listen, he says, not just once a week, but he says day by day. Day by day, we need to go down on our knees and pray and talk with God. This is the secret that the Apostle Paul gives us to be able to face whatever comes in our life. No matter what it might be or how it may come, the Apostle Paul says that we are able to face it in Christ Jesus because Jesus is renewing us day by day. We're reminded of God's faithfulness. He provides his grace for us. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, God's mercy is new to us. Morning by morning, he gives us mercy and grace for this day. And I come by to tell you that you would not be able to use the grace of God last week on today's problem. And that's what so many of us try to do. We may read God's word as prayer, prayer, and fail to do it uh, the next day or the next week and think that we can make it off of that prayer way back last week. Notice he says, day by day, we are being renewed. Day by day, we are to go to the throne of God and pull on his mercy and grace. Certainly, we will not be able to run our vehicle all week without filling it up with gas. If you run your vehicle, you're going to have to fill it up with gas. And so it is with us with this spiritual life of ours. Paul says, this is the secret and being able to face whatever come your way is to be in the body and the grace of God day by day. Be at the throne of God day by day, calling upon him for mercy, reading his word and meditating on his word, and God will see us through whatever problem we are going through. As we look back over our lives, many of us realize that we fail miserably to go to the throne of God to receive his mercy for this day. The Bible says that sufficient is the day, the problem that we have today. We have enough problem in this day that we don't need to take it over into the next day. And so it is with us today that we need to have God's grace and mercy each day in order to deal with the problems that we will face this day. This is what God told us in that prayer as he talked the Lord's prayer. He says, pray, give us this day our daily bread. Don't worry about tomorrow. The problem is that so many of us are worrying about tomorrow and tomorrow have enough problems of its own. This day, Call upon God's grace. This day, seek his mercy, his grace to carry you. And 
God promised that he will give us that sufficient grace. That sufficient grace to see us through. Even though we may have some pains and aches, he supplied that sufficient grace for us day by day. This is a secret Paul gives us. I pray that you would use that secret that he shared with us and see how you will fare day by day as you walk in God's grace and mercy. Listen, as he continued with us, he says, let's not be concerned about the things of this world. The next verse there said, the things that we are able to see the thing, the problem that we spend so much time looking and grappling at the things that we can see and fail to realize that all of these things are going to pass away. All of these things and even our problems are going to pass away. They will pass away. They will pass away. Yes, we can say like the hymn right now, I'm so glad trouble don't last always. It came to pass. It came to pass. And it will pass. Listen what he says. It says, fix your eyes then on the things that we can't see. He reminds us again in his word. He said, fix your eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. And then he says, run this race with perseverance. Run it. No matter what happened, run this race. And then God will be there to welcome us at the very end. Yes, fix your eyes on the things, for these things will pass away. But the things that of heaven, the things that God say in his word that where neither moth nor thief can break in and steal, they will last forever. Those are the things that we have to fix our eyes on the eternal glory. And then he says, this suffering is just for a moment. I'm sure that some of you will say, wait a minute, wait a minute. The suffering that I've gone through, the heartaches and the disappointment that I've gone through, the sadness that I've gone through is not just for a moment. Some of you may feel that it lasts for a lifetime, but Paul says it's just for a moment. And what he is comparing, he says, now he is comparing the suffering, the trouble that we go through here to the glory that God has awaiting for us. And he says, it's just for a moment. And then he says, it's light. Not only does it say it's just for a moment, he said, it's light. Some of us will say, no, those burdens that I've been carrying for a while have been heavy. Paul says this light suffering is just for a moment. When we consider the things that are waiting for us, he says again, he says, eyes are not seen, ears are not heard. What God has awaiting for those who put that trust in him day by day, day by day as we walk with God. Are we able to face all the troubles, the heartaches, the disappointment that comes our way? As someone has said, today, Lord, me and you can face whatever. And we can with God. For his word assure us all things are possible for those who believe. Not some. But all things are possible for those who put that trust in God and believe the Lord with you. I can accomplish all things. Lord, with you, this is just a little thing. As I keep my eyes fixed on the glory that is waiting for us. Yes, as we think of what we go through in this life is meaningless. Nothing is meaningless for a child of God. When we realize that everything God has designed our plan. That he have a plan for us. I know the plan that I have for you. Plan is good. And not to harm you. When we realize that. That everything that we do. Every step that we make. Everything God has so ordained it. Listen he says here. To work out for our glory. That we may become more and more like Jesus. 
That's why God is working on us. That's why sometimes we may go through some suffering. And God is doing nothing more for us than he did for his son. Notice he can't carry his son through some suffering. And he carried us through some suffering. To get away the trap and all that we may shine and be more like Jesus and reflect Jesus in our lives. All realize that children of God as you go through some, undergo through some suffering. It's just for a moment. It's light. And God is working out for you so that you may be more and more like Jesus. That's his goal and plan for us. Yes, when we fix our eyes on Jesus, Paul says, don't think of the things of this world, things that we can see, but the things that we can't see that is eternal, eternal in heaven, waiting for us there. Yes, then he goes on and says to us again, this body, this tent that we have, even though it may be destroyed. This tent, this body, he says, says I'm not worried about it because I'm, I'm going to win in the end. This tent that I have, I know that God is going to give me a new body. Even though this tent, as he called it, this earthly body of ours is destroyed, I have a new building. I have a building not made by human hand, but eternal in the sky. The new new body that you have won't be made by human hand. Won't have to do nothing, have nothing to do with human. Nothing at all. It's God who will give us a glorified body. A body free from the suffering and pain of this world. And then it's going to last forever and ever and ever. No ending to it. So Paul can say to us, this little light suffering that we are going through is nothing to be compared to the glory that God has awaiting for us. But then in order to accomplish that, my brothers and sisters, we got to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. The things that are eternal, the things that we can't see, that faith and that hope, we have to keep our mind and heart set on Jesus, even though this body is destroyed. Yes, the soul of ours, the spirit of ours, remain renewed day by day. God renew it. So much so that we can join in with the prophet Isaiah that God renew our spirit, that we will be like eagles mounted up on the eagle's wing, running and not get weary walking and faint not because God will renew us day by day to keep on going whatever come so you leave here today and perhaps maybe in force you leave here you may be disappointed before you leave here you may be somebody may bust your bubble before you leave here, somebody may say something to discourage you. And you're going out to a, into a mean, cruel world where every day somebody is going to be, the devil is going to be at you. So how are we going to make it? We need to remember the secret that Paul gave us to know that God is renewing us. That he has sufficient grace for you each and every day to carry you through this day. And as we come to the throne of grace, pleading God, shower your grace upon us again. For Lord, I need it for tomorrow. I'm going to run into the troubles tomorrow. I need that grace. And the grace that I had yesterday won't work for tomorrow. Lord, I need that sufficient grace today and every day. Day by day, it says, he is renewing us. And that's the secret. That's the secret to getting through. That's the secret of making it. To be able to smile at those who talk about you and say evil things about you. To be able to walk away. To be able to turn your back and say, God, you have it. Uh, I can't have it, Lord. I, I'm not going to even attempt. I'm giving it to you. That's the way to make it. Or oh, we're on a journey. We're just pure from here. 
And that around every turn, every corner, there's trouble waiting for us. The Bible says of a man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Not just a little, but full of trouble. Every day is waiting for you. But God has given us the secret. He promised to be with us and he promised to give us that sufficient grace to help us through. The Apostle Paul ran into trouble. He had a throne in the flesh that he thought that he couldn't deal with. And he said, Lord, pray one time, two times, three times. And God says, my grace hmm, is sufficient for you to carry you through until I call you to come on to be with me. Yes, yeah, some of us got some problems that no matter how hard we pray, no matter how hard we pray and read God's word, uh, they're going to probably still be with us until God calls us home. But oh, that's sufficient grace. Hallelujah, church. That sufficient grace is there to help you day by day to keep on moving and keep on going until he calls you to be with him. Then, when it's all over, when he comes again, he have a glorified body for us. And we can say, like the Apostle Paul, when this earthly tent dissolves. But Paul reminds us along this journey, this is what he says, he says, we have been despised, but not forsaken. We have been knocked down, but not killed. We have been beaten, but not destroyed. And all of this, he says, all of this that happened along this journey, he says, we still have the victory because of God's sufficient grace. So brothers and sisters, I charge you today, go from this place knowing that God's grace is sufficient for you. Go each and every day and every moment knowing that he is with us. Go each and every day knowing that he will fight your battle for you. Go each and every day knowing that there is no problem that God can handle. Go each and every day knowing that even though somebody gives way, that God has promised to renew our spirit day by day with his sufficient grace. And may he bless you as you go. Amen and amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all me in understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We'll be blessed by